several hours a day, several operators will walk the facility, read gauges, uh, listen for noise that doesn't sound right, uh, look out at the horizon for anomalies, boats that may not be caught on radar, look for sheens, uh, and so and so on and so on. So primarily right now, what we're looking to do with SPOT or what we're doing with SPOT is really trying to replicate that observation piece so that I don't need necessarily an operator to go do that. I can have an operator actually review that information uh, from a central location, if you will. When I need to plan a job on Mad Dog, uh, as a planner that's normally sitting in an office here in Houston, uh, I need to take a visit to Mad Dog. I need to assess the area that I want to do this change to my facility or this work to my facility, understand height and whether I need scaffolding or rope access people, uh, take dimensions and then ultimately bring all that information back into the office, plan the job, and then go out and execute. Uh, we believe a lot of that upfront remote work uh, preparation can be done uh, with a remotely controlled uh, robot to go out with LIDAR, uh, or basically being able to measure uh, areas, being able to pan, tilt, zoom, and really understand the entire area in, in real condition, real time, not a static photo from years before. Ultimately, we plan to do much more in regards to looking for things that humans can't with. We've, through other technology programs, we've got multispectral, hyperspectral imaging that, you know, basically can see many bands across that spectrum. Uh, and, you know, it, the, the idea there is to throw something like that on spot or a robot similar to be able to see things that the human eye can't see. Uh, and and uh, such as methane emissions, 